Video lecture five, valence electrons and ions. Okay, the valence shell is the outermost energy level that contains electrons. Um, most elements are going to gain or lose electrons in order to follow the octet rule. Remember, the octet rule is going to be eight electrons in the outer shell. Um, this is going to be made up of both the S and the P sublevels. Remember, in some cases, that it can be the S followed by a D followed by a P, like 4S, 3D, 4P. Well, it's the 4S, the 4P. We want the total in those to equal 8. And most elements are going to do that, um, with the exception of hydrogen, helium, lithium, uh, beryllium, boron, for reasons we talked about earlier. Uh, these electrons that are in the outermost energy level are called valence electrons, and they're the basis for the atom-to-atom -atom interactions. So the atomic number gives it the identity. Atomic number gives it the chemical identity. The number of valence electrons gives it its chemical properties. And we saw that when we were talking about our families, alkaline metals with one valence electron, all shared similar chemical properties. So atoms are going to gain or lose electrons in order to achieve a full, complete p orbital. Uh, so it'll be like those noble gases. So let's take a look at some electron configurations for some elements. In this first element, this is the electron configuration for potassium. There's 19 total electrons. What's the outermost energy level? It's going to be 4. So when we look, there's going to be one valence electron. Our second element is nitrogen with 7 electrons total. The outermost energy level is 2. So we're going to add these together. So 2 plus 3 means that there's a total of 5 valence electrons. Take a second and let's, figure out, let's see if you can figure out the number of valence electrons for nickel with 28 electrons. Here's one of those places where we're going to see that overlap. 4s is still the outermost because 4 is the highest energy level. So this is going to have two valence electrons. So let's take a look back at potassium. Potassium had one valence electron. Let's take a look at some of our, some of our alkali metals. We have sodium, potassium, and rubidium. Notice 1, 1, 1. This is where we get that concept of the alkali metal family having one valence electron. So when we take a look, we're not going to want to we're not going to want to continue to have to do electron configurations to figure out the number of valence electrons. So let's take a look at the periodic table. If you're an alkali metal, we call this group 1A. Okay, all of these are going to have one valence electron. Group 2A is going to have two valence electrons. Our D block, our D block elements are going to vary, a little bit harder to tell. And then in our P block, this is group 13 or 3A. So group 13 has three, group 14 has four. Okay, this is also group 4A, group 5A, or group 15. It's going to have 5. Again, this stands for everything on the way down. 6A is going to have 6. Here would be group 16, group 17, or group 7A. It's going to have 7. And then group 8A or group 18 are going to have 8, with the exception of helium, which has 2. So each column on the periodic table has the same number of valence electrons. This explains why Again, why elements are put in the same family, why they have the same chemical properties. Because the valence of electrons are responsible for their chemical behavior. If we want to create, if we want to create uh, Lewis dot diagrams, if we want to create some Lewis dot diagrams for some elements, what we're going to need is, for dot diagrams, we're going to need two things. We're going to need the symbol. And we're going to need the number of valence electrons. So let's take lithium. Okay, there's the symbol, so that's our first part. So now that we have our symbol, 
we know that there is one valence electron because it's an alkali metal in group 1A. So we're going to put one dot. So that's the electron dot diagram for lithium. Let's look at nitrogen. Nitrogen is in group 15, so it'll have five valence electrons. So what we're going to do is we'll start one, two, three, four, five. So it doesn't matter where you start. You can put that last dot there. We can put it here. We can do it here. We can do it here. Let's do, I don't know, uh, silicon. Silicon is in group 14. So it'll have four valence electrons. One, two, three, four. Remember, it doesn't matter where you start, it doesn't matter where you finish. One on a side before you double up. Follow Hun's rule. And for one more example, let's do a noble gas. Let's do neon. Neon is in group 18. Eight valence electrons. So neon is going to look like any with eight dots around it. So we're going to need to know about these Lewis dot structures because they're going to help us form ions. Okay, remember ions are atoms that have gained or lost electrons. Because remember, we want to get to the magic number of eight because of our octet rule. Cations, cats, are positive. Cats are positive. Get it? Positive signs. Right? We've got our little positive cat. I know it's lovely, isn't it? Okay, these positive cats are going to want to lose electrons. That's what's going to happen to get a positive charge. So if we take something, a neutral atom, if it's neutral, it's going to have, say, 10 protons, 10 electrons, right? Protons are positive, electrons are negative. This gives us a resulting charge of zero. But if we change the number of electrons, we still have to keep the number of protons, positive protons, because if we change the number of protons, we change the chemical's identity, the element's identity. We're not doing that. We're just changing the number of electrons. So if we lose an electron, say go from 10 electrons to 9 electrons, electrons are negative, 10 minus 9, it's a positive one. So losing electrons will result in a positive charge. Now let's look at anions. Anions. A negative ion. These negative ions are going to gain electrons. So again, if we look at a neutral atom, let's again just stick with 10. If we have 10 positive protons and 10 negative electrons, we get neutral, no atom, no charge on it. So let's gain an electron. So we're still going to have our 10 positive protons, but now if we gain an electron, we have 11. 10 minus 11 is a negative 1. There's our negative, charged, uh, our negative charge on our ion. What type of atoms form cations? Remember, these are metals. Anions are formed by nonmetals. So, take a look. Chlorine. Is this element going to gain an electron or lose 7 to get to 8? Well, odds are it's going to want to gain an electron. It's easier to gain 1 than give up 7. So, it has 17 protons. It had 17 electrons, but now it's gained an electron. So plus 17 minus 18, the charge is going to be negative 1. Let's look at the electron dot diagram for fluorine. Seven valence electrons. Again, we're going to want to add an electron. There's where we would add an electron. So fluorine had nine protons, nine electrons. It gained one, so now it has 10 electrons. The resulting charge is a negative 1. What about this element? Does it want to gain 7 or give up 1 to have a full valence shell? Well, if it gets rid of that one electron, 
Now it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 electrons in its valence shell. So sodium, originally 10 pro 11 protons, 11 electrons. These are positive, these are negative, no charge. Well, if we get rid of an electron, we now only have 10. Plus 11, minus 10, it's a negative 1 charge. So let's practice some atomic peonies with ions. Again, this is going to stay the same. The atomic number and the number of protons are always going to be equal. So 11, 13, 9, 8, 20. If sodium has a positive 1 charge, 11 minus what number gives us a positive 1? This has to be 10. So 13, positive charge. So 13 minus the number of electrons gives us a positive 3 charge. Again, this has to be 10. Negative 1 charge. 9 minus how much gives us a negative 1? 10. Negative 2. 8 minus what number gives us a negative 2? 10. 20 minus what number gives us a positive 2? This has to be 18.